Hey guys, Tarot here bringing you this fourth instalment of Micro Tips and Tricks for Company of Heroes 2. First up, more effective ways to give capture orders. So here's the scenario, it's at the start of the game and you're leaving your base trying to capture some territory. So what I'm going to do is open the tactical map, capture the first point, then hold shift and capture the second point, adding it to the queue, meaning the squad will automatically go and capture the next point after securing the first one. Now this is the easiest way to capture a territory, however there are a few issues with it. First up we'll take a look at speed. Notice the squad stops next to the flag towards the side you just came from. And then once the capture is complete they set off from this spot to the next point. The problem is moving from that spot to the edge of the capping circle takes about 4 seconds. This is essentially 4 seconds of wasted time. Instead what you should do is move as close to the edge of the capping circle as you can by moving towards the next territory point and then hitting stop when you are right on the edge. And then issuing the command to capture the next point as soon as this one has completed. This is easiest to do at the start of the game when not much else is going on. It is also the most important to do it then because getting to a building or a piece of cover a few seconds ahead of your opponent could make all the difference in those early game engagements. Another issue with the standard capture order sending you to the centre of the circle is that territory gives a small radius of sight around the flag to the team that owns it. Players can then use this scouting information to set off traps such as demo charges or if you are trying to capture the point with an inappropriate unit such as a low health squad or a vulnerable team weapon, they will send a unit to try and kill it. To avoid these scenarios or to simply deny your opponent their scouting information, stay on the edge of the point until it has been neutralized, after which they have lost sight so you are free to move around in the circle without giving them any scouting information. And now we switch to later in the game, I issue the standard queued up capture command with the squad of LMG Grenadiers. This time they encounter an enemy squad on the way to the next point. Let's say I'm busy somewhere else on the map and I don't notice this. They will run right past the enemy squad to the capture flag before turning around to engage them. In the process they will take a lot of damage and not deal much in return due to the firing on the move penalties and facing the wrong direction. Instead what you can do is queue up an attack command and then a capture command after it. And now if the squad encounters enemies on the way there, they will instantly stop moving and start attacking. Because the fight is happening at long range, you will take less damage, giving you more time to notice the engagement and react accordingly. This is most important to do on squads that are good at long range, such as LMG Grenadiers. Next up we have attacking with heavy machine guns. So here we have a scenario where two squads are trying to assault this machine gun. Because they are spread out so far, the area of effect suppression is not going to get them both. This means you are going to have to manually target the second squad in order to suppress them both. However if you do this using right click and in the heat of battle you accidentally misclick and target the ground, your machine gun will then pack up and start moving towards that point. In almost every case this will end up losing you the engagement. Instead you should use the attack command to target the second squad, in this case Q because I am using grid keys. This way if you misclick and target the ground your machine gun will not pack up. Good micro is not always about squeezing an extra bit of effectiveness out of your units, it also encompasses minimizing the effects of your own mistakes. If you use grid keys do not transfer this habit to machine guns in buildings, as the command for attack when machine guns are out in the open Q is also the command for evacuate building. Next up is targeting off map airstrikes. When you use certain off map airstrike abilities this indicator will come up. This will show you roughly the area the strike will hit and the arrows indicate which direction the plane will come from. When the arrows are pointed from north to south the plane comes from the north and then when the arrows are pointing in the opposite direction the plane comes from the opposite direction. This is important because the side of the map the plane comes in from dictates how far it has to travel before delivering its payload. In this case close to the edge of the map we bring it in from the short side, it is approximately 4 seconds between using the ability and the shells landing. And now when we bring it in in the same spot but from the opposite direction it takes approximately twice as long, so try and set the arrows in the UI to minimize the plane's travel time and maximize the chance of the strike landing. 
Also be aware that these abilities can be extremely strong on the edges of the map due to the short travel time, but rather ineffective in the centre of the map due to the longer travel time. That's it for this instalment guys, if you'd like to support the production of these videos, here's the link to my Patreon page, otherwise remember to share it with your friends, but not with your enemies.